Would you take advice from a chiropractor on your kidney health? So I don't ever do this because I believe in putting positive vibes out into the world and positive vibes on the internet, but this week I just couldn't help myself. I came across a video by Eric Berg, a chiropractor with 12.6 million subscribers, and this video has almost 450,000 views in just a few weeks. Seven foods that destroy your kidneys. I'm going to break down this video for you and tell you why you should not be listening to a chiropractor when you're looking for kidney health advice. Instead, you should be coming here. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board certified kidney doctor. I'm also the cooking doc and everything we talk about here today, it's just information. This is not medical advice. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. Tell me if you like these kind of myth busting videos. We can do more. So let's go down his list and see whether Dr. Berg really knows what he's talking about. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. There are no one or two foods that will destroy your kidneys. It's about your overall dietary pattern. Now let's go. The first food he mentions is instant ramen noodles. Listen to him talk about the preservative TBHQ that is in some of these packages of noodles. This preservative is very toxic to the kidneys. It can actually cause the kidneys to work harder where you actually enlarge your kidney. And it also has the ability in some cases to produce cancer in your kidneys. Guess what? He made that up. There has never been a study or any data that suggests that TBHQ can make human kidneys bigger, nor that it can produce cancer in human kidneys. That's right. No data. In fact, TBHQ is actually an antioxidant and researchers are now looking at whether TBHQ can protect your kidneys from the damage that comes from diabetes. Number two. Next, this video goes into Skittles. You can come for Skittles, my friend, but don't you come for my gummy bears. Oh no, you didn't. Now, if you've watched me before, you know that I'd never promote Skittles or other sugary candies like gummy bears, even though I love them. So I agree with limiting your Skittle intake to little or none. But in his video, he blames the artificial coloring dye in Skittles as promoting kidney damage. Here's what he says about the dye in the Skittles. Food dyes. These artificial dyes are very hard on the kidney. The kidney has to get rid of them. Now also realize at first the kidney is going to recycle a lot of that dye and it's going to kind of go through your bloodstream over and over and over again. You don't want artificial dyes going through your body like that. Guess what? Again, there are no human studies on dyes and kidney function. This whole idea, as far as I could tell, comes from one small study of 54 rats in Egypt where they demonstrated that these rats who were fed tons of artificial dyes, they made them drink fruit juice and they made them eat something called tomato ketchup potato chips or TKPC as the study calls them. Anyways, these rats had some changes in their kidney architecture and their kidneys filtering. Now this has never been repeated as far as I can tell and never been tested on humans. And yet this is what Google AI and Dr. Berg tell you when you look to see if artificial food coloring can have an impact on your kidneys. Now, are some people better off limiting artificial coloring? Probably. Is there any redeeming health quality to Skittles? Hell no. Still, let's stick with the facts and science-based analysis. Number three, fried chicken. Here's what Dr. Berg says. I'm going to quote him. The combination of high heat, seed oils, and breading in fried chicken can lead to glycation, a process that clogs everything up, especially in the kidneys. Well, let's get something clear. Nothing that you eat clogs up your kidneys. It's just not the way it works. That's like making up how the kidneys work out of thin air. Now, yes, the kidneys can get scarring in them from diabetes, and the filtering structures, those 2 million filtering structures that you're born with, can get damaged over time from diabetes, but nothing in the food you eat clogs up your kidneys. It just doesn't happen. Now, am I suggesting that it's healthy to eat Bojangles or KFC fried chicken every day? Of course not. Those foods are high in fat, salt, calories, and are definitely something you should avoid except for on special occasions because there's nothing like a bucket of fried chicken when you really need it. Number four, Dr. Berg says you should avoid commercial bread because it's loaded loaded with potassium bromate. Now, potassium bromate is a chemical additive commonly used in the food industry. It helps strengthen dough and enhance the texture of bread goods. It's often added to the bread rolls and other bread goods to make them kind of rise higher and have a more uniform texture. Now, to his credit, there are a few experimental animal models where potassium bromate 
consuming large amounts of it does lead to a small increase in kidney cancer cells and kidney cancer incidence in rats, but there are no human studies, none. And if you're worried, it's simple to find bread without potassium bromate in it, right at your grocery store. Number five, Dr. Berg says you should limit soda. Well, guess what? Yes, I completely agree with that fact. Drinking too much soda is not good for your kidney health. I've said that before. Sugar, these sugar sweetened sodas can put you at risk for obesity and diabetes, which could put your kidneys at risk. There has even been an association with drinking too much diet soda and developing kidney disease. But listen to this other thing that he says. Phosphoric acid is destructive on the kidneys. This is where it's clear again that he does not understand kidney health and kidney physiology or pathophysiology. Phosphoric acid is not directly destructive on the kidneys. Yes, people with chronic kidney disease, they do need to avoid dark sodas with phosphoric acid in them. That's because the kidneys can't get rid of the extra phosphorus. Plus, the phosphorus in these additives, these dark sodas like Coca-Cola and stuff, that coloring is easily absorbed into the body. So when you drink it, that phosphorus gets absorbed and then the kidneys can't get rid of it. So it's important for people with kidney disease to stay away from dark sodas. But that's because we don't want the phosphorus building up too high in the blood. Not because that phosphoric acid is destructive on the kidneys, that part is made up and you can literally give the same advice without making up a piece of information. Next, let's tackle number six, agave syrup. Here he goes through why agave syrup is bad for your kidneys and he focuses on the fructose in agave syrup. This one, eh, it gets a meh, eh. Honestly, I lump the dangers of agave syrup up there in the same category of any sugar sweetener. It doesn't matter to me what the glycemic index is or how much fructose or glucose it is that makes that thing sweet. Consuming too much sugar of any kind can put your kidneys at risk and lead to obesity and diabetes. And diabetes is the number one cause of kidney failure worldwide. So avoid the sugar. Agave syrup is not inherently more toxic to your kidneys than any of the other sugar sweeteners that you may be consuming and that you're probably eating and drinking too much of. Lastly, he discusses the destructive effect of cereals. Now, I do agree with Dr. Berg here that breakfast cereals are not usually good for your health. They often are high in sugars, high in refined carbohydrates, low in fiber. Although, not always. You can find cereals that are low in sugar and high in fiber like, ready? Nature's Path Heritage Flakes or Grape Nuts Flakes or even Cheerios. However, he also discusses how the cereals often contain glyphosate, which is a pesticide. Now this one is interesting because people are actively studying whether high levels of glyphosate in Sri Lanka is a factor in the development of unexplained chronic kidney disease. A study last year did find, and I'm quoting, a glyphosate presence in regions with geogenic high water hardness and fluoride, and that demonstrates a strong correlation with unexplained chronic kidney disease. So maybe there is something there, but we don't know for sure. Now, does that have anything to do with the cereals you eat and whether the glyphosate associated with the growth of those ingredients in the cereal can harm your kidneys? Don't know. But if you're worried about it, it's easy to avoid cereals that have that in it. So how did he do? Let's conclude it. Dr. Berg lists seven foods that are certainly unhealthy for a variety of reasons, but he does it by making broad speculations, linking small animal studies to human development of disease, and by educating us with nonsensical statements about kidney physiology. If it gets people to eat healthier and cook at home, I guess it's okay, but I think we can do it in a more truthful and fact-based manner. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I'm Dr. Blake Schusterman. I'm a board-certified kidney doctor, and I'm also the cooking doc. Check out my website, cookingdoc.com. We're in the midst of refreshing it. Lots of healthy recipes on there and lots of good information. Check out my book, The Cooking Docs, Kidney Healthy Cooking, a Modern 10-Step Guide to Preventing and Managing Kidney Disease, and I'll see you next time.